how can oxygen bombs not destroy? It destroys us, and, and every, every structure, every organ gets destroyed, and the telomere gets destroyed too. It's, as we live longer and longer and longer, it, we, we could detonate more bombs, and it shortens the telomere. That's why they say low calorie. If you eat less, you live longer. Why? Because if you eat more, you detonate more oxygen bombs to consume the energy. Well, if you have more explosions in your lifetime, you're going to live shorter, isn't it? But there's a part of this that's confusing, Dr. Chen. For example, a lot of us were told that taking in more oxygen through exercise is good. So I'm confused. Have you ever seen an aerobic athlete lift beyond 70? Have you? I don't think so. I can tell you none. They are aerobic athletes. These are joggers, bicyclists. They, They are great aerobic athletes. Do they live long? No. Actually, they live shorter because of consumption of oxygen. So aerobic keeps you fit exercise. It does not make you live longer at all. I think there's a lot of confusion about the distinction you just made. That's really critical. So aerobics yeah. keeps us fit, so, but it doesn't necessarily give us longevity. Correct. That's correct. huge. That's huge because yeah. I interpreted the fitness to assume the longevity, but no, it doesn't. That's does the it? wrong assumption. Got it. Well, I think the most of assumption. the public does too. Yes. Yes. Many people can have a misconception. Conception. Okay. Now, now going back to going back to so this is the first. Uh, mechanism to shorten is the oxidation or de- detonation of oxygen bombs for the lack of be- better uh, description. The second process is a duplication. And we'll go back to that old lady again. The uh, old lady's facial cell and the and, and young baby's facial cell are both on this planet Earth 90 days, meant to be. All our facial cells are around 90 days, and we shed them, and a new one is born. All right. Now, why... why, why, why so in the duplication of facial cell, every 90 days, every 90 days, 90 days, and our red blood cell, by the way, all days, your red blood cell today, you know, was duplicated 90 days ago. And after 90 days, it dies. The spleen just splits it and, and metabolizes it, and then a new red blood cell is born. Now, in doing all of that replication, it takes a tip of the previous cell telomere. So... The, the, the cells in dividing, in order to take that genetic information from the previous mother cell into the daughter cell, it takes off a little chip of the telomere. So as the cell divides, more and more and more cycles, it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter in order to keep the DNA information. And that's why we catch people or not catch people like O.J. Simpson trial. You heard of that, DNA, DNA. Why, why, why is DNA so important? Because every cell has that information. And where does it get information from? From the mother cell. And, and, and the mother cell sacrifices a little tip of it. And that's why as we live longer, our telomere gets shorter and shorter and shorter and eventually we die when it's not there anymore. So that's the two processes that shortens it. And, and, and the, the Nobel Prize is telling the world, hey, you guys, Please know that you can keep this telomere long, and, and you can keep it long, long for a long, 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 long time. You know, and, and how do you keep it long? By keeping your hormones, bioidentical ones, by the way, optimal, optimal. Don't don't don't, don't look at the the, the the ninety year old and looking at another ninety year old and say, "Oh, you're ninety year old. I'm ninety year old. Our our hormone levels are normal." Sure, compared to 90-year-olds, you are normal, but compared to a 20-year-old, you are very short. <laughs> so, so don't look at the 90-year-olds or 70-year-olds or 40 year old, whatever you are. Look to the 20-year-old. Do I have the telomere length of a 20-year-old? Do I have the hormone levels of a 20-year-old? Look to the normal, okay? And, and, and don't look to the your age group. Your age group is not normal. You're meant to die. We are all meant to die. We are meant to shorten. We're meant to get sick and die. So that's the message. The message is check your bioidentical hormones. Check them. Doctors never do. And maybe gynecologists will check your uh, progesterone and estrogen once in your lifetime. And if you're a guy, I'll be very happy if your urologist check your testosterone, man. You know? Uh, many people, many men just come and live and die on this planet never knowing at any moment in their lifespan 
what their testosterone has been at 20, at 50, at 60, at 70. They don't know that. And that's what the message is or should be uh, from the Nobel Prize is check your testosterone at least, please, if you're a man, and check your estrogen progesterone uh, at least, please, if you are a female near menopause. Question about even the checking, because like everything in medicine and in health, you have criteria. It used to be years ago when I was a young tournament tennis player and I had problems with my thyroid. And in those days, they didn't know anything like what they know now. But there are levels and there are certain types of checks that you would have. You know, they would check the T4. You know, yeah. they do a TSH panel. Now they know that other things like free T3 and there's other types yeah. of tests that are more first. advanced. Exactly. So yeah. my question to you is, People can go to their doctors, but if the doctors aren't checking what you're saying, if the doctors don't know what are considered optimal levels and who has access to those optimal levels, does the public have a way of knowing that so they can go to their doctors and say, this is what it should be? Well, The doctors don't always know that. Yeah. You, you are, you are, you're right on the money. Uh, let me tell you this. You ask your doctor, what year did you graduate it? If he graduated medical school more than 15 years ago, he's out of date. And if he doesn't keep, keep, keep up and he's un, uh, unconscionable because he's going to make the money, make, make, make the payment for the house and the car, he, he has no time to keep up. And if he doesn't keep up, he may not even know what Nobel Prize this year was given to. Ask him, do you know what Nobel Prize in medicine this year was awarded to? If he can't answer that question, leave. Don't even ask him for, for a prescription for, for hormones. He hasn't kept up. And he doesn't, he doesn't keep up in this, he won't keep up in anything. Let me give you this offer to all your listeners and, 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 and your followers. Uh, I will give them a free prescription, all right, from Dr. Edmund Chen. And it doesn't work in New York because New York does not, New York law does not allow out of state physicians uh, uh, to give prescription in their state. So that's the only exception, but you can drive across the bridge to New Jersey, <laughs> okay? So if you're in New York, you can go to New Jersey, and my prescription is good in New Jersey. But it's good so, anywhere else in the U.S., correct? Anywhere in the U.S. I'm licensed in California, and it's good anywhere in the U.S. You take my prescription, water hormones, uh, by, by, by emailing me my name, Edmund, E-D-M-U-N-D-C-H-E-I-N, at yahoo.com, and I promise you I will give you a signed prescription for a blood test over the email, and by, please do, do it by email only, because if you do it by letter, it's going to cost me a lot of money <laughs> to <laughs> post it, you know, that and inefficient, all right? So do it email, and I'll send it back to you, email with an attachment, and you print it out, you take it to the lab, and you can check all your hormones that they are to be checked. Uh, and, 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 and that's, that's an offer. And, and you, you hit, you hit it right on the point. Many doctors not only will not give you a hormone and they don't think Hormones are important still today. All right, today. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, 2010. They, 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 they still are behind times. Let's talk about. I think that's a great offer. I think also that what happens after they go ahead and they get their blood tested. What happens after that is then they look at the report. Every report gives you the reference range. Uh, and that and and depends on your age. You now, do they get that report, or does that go only to you? Will they get a copy? Every, of the- no. Uh, in fact, every state law uh, uh, now, please be informed that mandates that all the labs give you a copy, even though many labs would not like to. Uh, they like to give it to the doctor. Uh, they like to kiss their rear ends. But uh, uh, no, you. Every state uh, uh, has a law that uh, uh, protects you and. Uh, makes that you you are entitled to. Uh, I think that's fantastic. I'm so glad you're saying that because this has been such an issue for me with every doctor and so many other people's doctors they've gone to where they refuse to give them part of their medical records, copies of their blood work. Unbelievable. And, and it's a tr- it's a bad tradition. You know why it's a bad tradition? Because doctors use the thing they are gods. So when you, they they want to get the report first, uh, let, let's let's say I, I, it's an AIDS test. And, 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 and can you imagine, I get the report first, and it says a positive HIV. You know, I would be calling my doctor. You're not going to 
doctor, I got HIV. And, and the doctor says, oh, I haven't got a copy yet. It, it made him look real ignorant, you understand? And so doctors don't like that. He, he will pick up the phone and jam the lab. Why did you... Talk-